Okay. I just want to say up front, I loved Wonder Woman. I think that's a great movie. I think that's DC's first great, genuinely great film since the Dark Knight trilogy. That's how much I think Wonder Woman is phenomenal and great. I've already said I loved Black Panther to death. Now, having said that, I think Captain Marvel is my least favorite out of all the Marvel Cinematic Universe films. I think she's a really interesting character. I think there's potential there. And I look forward to seeing her in Endgame. And I look forward, well, I look forward to, to her in Endgame as well as her future movies. But... I think this movie around her did not do her justice. And the reason I feel that the the biggest... I, you know, eventually these Marvel films do hit a point. I've had films, Marvel films I've seen in the past that I found underwhelming when I first saw them. But after rewatches, I found things I liked about it. I saw how it fit in the overall timeline. I appreciated it for it. I don't think I'm going to have that feeling with Captain Marvel because I don't think the movie was underwhelming. I think the movie had some serious story problems. And I think, I don't think the problem is, I don't think, you know, a lot of critics and a lot of reviews say things like Brie Larson wasn't a good actress for the role, wasn't good for the character. But I'll I mean, look, she's an Oscar award-winning actress. I mean, she has proven that she is a great actress. She can give a great performance. And she's proven to also be a genuinely fun person. She has, she has a great personality. I mean, she has all the makings of someone who would portray a Marvel superhero. It's just... The problem with this movie is just how weirdly it's edited. It's just edited, and I'm, I'm, it's edited backwards. It's edited where we meet our hero, Captain Marvel, and she's already in space. She's already with this team, and they're out, you know, uh, with the Kree warriors. And they're, but then it kind of goes into weird flashbacks throughout the story of her past, and I get it. They're trying to do the Batman Begins route. They're trying to be like Batman Begins, where Batman Begins told its story out of order as well, as well, where we see Bruce Wayne, and the movie just opens with him in a prison, and then he becomes, goes to the mountains, trains with a Ra's al Ghul, becomes the Batman, and throughout that whole moment, you have scenes that are flashbacks to how, to his parents getting murdered, to him becoming, to him like having these experiences during his childhood, and and then also as an adult, a young adult, and then seeing, and then you see why he becomes the Batman, and I think they were trying to do that with Captain Marvel, where you see where she is now and where the story is taking her, and in during the story you have flashbacks that take her back to her past. But the problem is I feel like the flashbacks are very short and quick. And you want to have these flashbacks to have an emotional impact. And I just feel like I'm not gonna, it's not going to be enough if they're just short and quick. And it's not going to be enough if I don't feel like the character changed since then. I don't think they do a good job of showcasing that her character has gone through some sort of progression. Like, it doesn't feel like her character went through a character arc. And that's what bothers me about the movie. Like, I couldn't describe it to you. Because I don't even know what they were going for. In terms of what the character arc should have been. Or what they were going for. It just seems like she she has some confidence. She's strong with who she is in the beginning of the movie. But she has these memories that she can't seem to understand. She starts learning more about these memories and there's a big twist in the movie and all these other plots and ever come about. But then it doesn't really feel like she changed her personality. Like she she's kind of the same. And it's it is kind of Yeah, I, I think that's what kind of frustrates me is that Samuel L. Jackson in this movie has Nick Fury as well. And 
he's good. I mean, he's Samuel L. Jackson. He's a young Nick Fury. So you see a Nick Fury who's kind of naive. This is before he became the Nick Fury we all know in Avengers. So we see him young and naive and learning and growing. He's, I'll give you this. The best thing about this movie is the relationship between uh, Carol Danvers and Nick Fury. I think their relationship, their friendship is sincere. I think it's genuine. I think it's funny. I think there's moments of mutual respect for both of them. Like, there's a scene when uh, um, Nick Fury respects Carol Danvers in terms of letting her... What am I trying to remember? Well, there's this great... Here's the crazy. There's a great scene in the car where they're just kind of talking about the struggles of being a soldier, the struggles of being a warrior, the struggles of war, because they both experienced it to some extent. And you see that camaraderie that sort of friendship grow from having gone through a similar struggle something that felt like winter soldier and when and when in winter soldier you saw uh captain america and the falcon kind of talking about what it was like to be in war and how coming back home after war doesn't necessarily feel the same and so i like moments like that they did stuff some character work that felt captain marvel feeling grounded and even relatable for a second but then a lot of the stuff just felt like stuff happened but it wasn't edited together properly in a way that where you could really tell a cohesive narrative or a narrative that felt emotionally engaging it was more like stuff happened and that's why i feel like this is the first marvel movie that is not as good as the other ones and it's hard i mean when you see that marvel logo you there's expect there's certain expectations because you're so used to seeing all these amazing films that came after it, that took risks, that took chances, that were so creative and ambitious. And it, it's this perfect blend of they're ambitious and by doing things that are weird and creative and different, but also staying true to telling their story, telling the story of the character, not trying to be big on showing off Easter eggs for future films, but helping you fall in love with the character showing you why people love this character to begin with and i just didn't get that from captain marvel i didn't get this why should we love this character what is it about her that 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 makes her a i guess like what what is it about it that's something, and this is something i don't i don't even think the movie and i I've, I've heard a lot about also how this movie has been very inspiring to women this movie has been something that and if that's the case then more power to them i don't because i think i'm also starting to realize maybe this movie just isn't for me because i'm not getting i mean on the one hand i like i i mean i loved wonder woman that was a movie that also uh, shows some stuff about being a woman uh, in terms of the struggles especially <laughs> since it took place in like the 1800s or like late 1800s early 1900s something yeah uh, 1900s because world War one but like that movie did that and I still emotionally connected with the character and emotionally connected with her story. I just couldn't emotionally connect connect with Captain Marvel and her story the way I could with Wonder Woman. And it's, I feel like it's because the story was not edited well. It wasn't told in a way that was, that really made any sense. It, it wasn't told in a way that you could emotionally connect with. It just kind of felt like it was just told but i don't get why it matters and then i also feel it didn't feel as creative as the other marvel movies like it didn't feel like yeah the kree warriors have their suits they're kind of greenish there's some scenes with some spaceships not even new spaceships we've seen some of them before in guardian of the galaxy with ronin and then it's like even the aliens, the, the, I forgot what their name is, but they're, they're able to shape shift, basically. They're able to, they're chameleons, they can change and look, in, they're an alien species that are capable of changing and into looking like other things. Like, they can look like an old lady, they can look like that guy in the street, they can look like anyone, you know, and, um, I thought that was interesting, but even their creature, their alien design was very, like, generic it, it didn't feel like the movie the movie didn't feel inspired it didn't feel like it was 
inspired from anything that felt grand. It just kind of felt like, here's a story, here's a Marvel trope of, okay, she's going to have the superpower and fly through spaceships and stuff. Okay, she's going to have a friend who's going to fly the ship and do stuff, even though she's she's a pilot, she's an Air Force pilot. She has a friend in the movie, and the friend's an Air Force pilot, and in the third act of the movie, she's flying a ship to, she's flying, flying an alien, or not really an alien, I guess a, yeah, I guess, I guess I could see how she could fly a prototype shield ship because she is an air force pilot so i guess that kind of makes sense i can buy that i guess it's just it doesn't like her her friend scene because you have Cap carol danvers and captain marvel all suited up and ready to fight and then you have uh her friend sort of having her own little final act fight spaceship flight fight sequence and it just feels like tacked on like it doesn't feel like it was earned. It just feels like it was there that happened. And that's something that bothers me about this movie. It just feels like things stuff that ha things happen. Like this movie felt like we just have to make this movie because then we'll understand her in Endgame. Like that was it. Like it doesn't feel like we're here to tell you an origin story that matters. It just feels like we got to make it so people know who Captain Marvel is before they go into Endgame. And I feel disappointed in that because I, I mean, I have, high, I mean, yes, I have high expectations for Marvel. They've made so many groundbreaking films that have changed the face of cinema. And this is the first time. And after like Black Panther, Infinity War, Ant Man and the Wasp, even Ant Man and the Wasp, like, this was, uh, this was a letdown. But I have faith that. Okay, I guess they felt they needed to make this movie so that we understand who she is in Endgame. Alright, well now we know who she is in Endgame. So, perhaps after Endgame is over and these first group of Avengers characters, are, we're probably not going to see them, I don't know. But um, we'll be able to... In a way, we'll, in a way, we'll be able to... Uh, see her in future movies and have her character arc be progressed so we can really see her for who she is and tell more creative interesting stories that, that expand upon the lore because in the sequels she won't be limited her story doesn't have to be limited to we have to tell this movie to set up end game or something like that it's like no we are done with end game that story is wrapped up now captain marvel can soar pun intended into her own character arc into her own sequels that'll continue her story into different places so i have faith for the character but i think for now this movie really is kind of a kind of a cash grab in a weird way like i feel like this is something that could have easily not been needed but they needed it i guess because oh they felt they needed it but talk about a crash grab because the movie made a billion dollars at the box office. So what do I know, right? Maybe it is good and I just didn't see it. Anyway, yeah. That's Captain Marvel. Either way, no matter what, I still have faith. Endgame's going to be incredible.